How to Paint a Peacock. I'm using an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas, a 3 quarter inch flat brush, titanium white, light blue permanent, and brilliant purple. Those are the three colors I'm starting out with. The other colors can be found in the description of the materials. So I'm going to start out with my wash brush. I'm going to dip it in the water and I'm going to triple load this brush. That means that I'm going to dip it in all three colors and I'm going to dip it in the white and the corners in the blue and the purple. We want mostly white for this because the white is going to blend with the blue and the purple to make a pastel looking background. So I'm going to paint the entire canvas like this. I'm going to go up and down and that blue and that purple and the white, they're going to blend together to make this abstract pastel looking background. And I'm not going to blend it all the way to one solid color. I'm just going to let the colors do their own thing by painting up and down. I want to be consistent with the strokes. I want to make sure that I am going up and down the whole way and um, making sure that they blend kind of smoothly together. As you go along, you may find that you want more purple or more blue in some areas, so you kind of decide or just do it freely without thinking about what you're doing. So I'm going to go silent here as you and I finish this background. It takes quite a bit of time to fill up this canvas. If you feel like you need to add a little bit of water to your brush or even a little bit of water to the canvas to help the paint colors go a little more faster and more smoothly, you can do that. Also, this is an opportunity for you to paint the sides if you're using a stretched canvas. So you can use the same colors that are on your palette to paint the sides. I um, did not do that for this demonstration, but I'd like to let you know that you can go ahead and do that. So my background is complete with my pastel colors and I want to go ahead and wait just a bit for that to dry. Next, I'm going to load my palette with Mars Black and Burnt Umber. I'm going to paint the tree next. I'm using a number 12 flat bright brush. I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm not going to pat that dry because I want my brush to be slightly wet. I'm going to grab some black so my brush is a little wet. Uh, my black is slightly watered down now and I grabbed some of the burnt umber, so that brown. So there's brown and black and water on my brush. I'm going to start at the bottom left and I'm going to paint the bottom part of my tree. So it's going to start out thick and I'm going to go not halfway up, I'd say about a third of the way up the canvas. I'm going to go vertical and my branch is going to get thinner. Okay. So, and then I'm going to go up for the um, branch that's kind of sticking up on the side here. And so branches always start out thicker. Um, using the flat bright brush always helps with branches because you can use the full width of the brush for the thicker area. And then when your branch gets thinner, you can twist the brush on its side and use the tip of the brush so it gets thinner. Um, and the, the fact that the paint's a little watery helps with getting the paint to flow so it's not so thick. Just you want to make sure you're smoothing out your strokes and not applying it really thick. Okay, so I'm basically loading my brush in the brown and the black. I'm going back and forth with those two colors and I'm filling it in and your branch should be a dark brown color. 
Okay, so this part of the branch is where the peacock is going to be perched on. And uh, so you want to make sure that you did leave enough room for that. If um, you're using a traceable, you could probably lay the paper on top of that area to make sure there's enough room. But I only went up about a third of the canvas. So I'm going to do some of the smaller branches and I'm using the brush um, on its side to get the thinner strokes of the branches and to make it go to a point you release the pressure on your brush. So you start out kind of um, with a heavy pressure and then you um, slightly let go of the brush just a little bit to hold it lightly and that'll get that brush, that tip of the branch to go to a point. So I'm just kind of freehand handed these br um, branches. Um, I should have mentioned that you probably, if you um, if you're watching this first and before painting, um, I would recommend maybe you draw the branches with chalk and then um, you can paint over the branches. So that's an option you can do to make sure you have the branches laid out the way that you want them. Okay. So next I'm going to add a little bit of texture to the branches and I didn't rinse my brush. I just took my number 12 flat and dipped it in the white, the titanium white. And I'm just going to use the brush on its side, so the tip of the brush, and I'm going to paint some up and down strokes, kind of curvy strokes. And that white is going to blend with that wet brown black color and it's going to create some texture in the tree branches. So I'm going to do that all throughout the branches. Um, this is an optional step. It's a detailed step. If you want to skip it, you can skip that step. That's all the branches I'm going to do. I want to make sure that I have all this space in the middle for the peacock. This is the drawing. I did it on a piece of paper first. I practiced on paper and then I drew it with chalk. Now I did turn that drawing into a traceable. So if you, you're more than welcome to print it out and transfer it. There's no problem in that whatsoever, but I'm going to show you how to draw it. So this is a, peak, a piece of chalk and so I'm going to start on the bottom where the body part touches the branch and it's going to uh, make this spiral shape. Okay, so I'm sketching it out. So where the head goes down, there is a spiral right here. Um, the head forms a circle. And then the neck starts out kind of thin. I'd say maybe a finger or probably two, a finger and a half width for the neck starting out. And then it gets kind of thick. And then the shape of the body on the bottom is an upside down teardrop shape. So it goes to a point. And the tail, I'm going to do two wavy lines for the tail. I'm not going to draw any details on the inside. This is just going to um, define where the tail is going to be. And then we have a wing and that's an upside down teardrop shape. We have the beak, so this triangle for the beak, and there's a triangle right there that overlaps the head, goes over the head, and then we have a circle on the inside for um, the side of his face, and we have the eye, and then I'm going to do three lines on the top of his head for his head tail feather. Okay. So that's it. Um, next, I'm going to paint the peacock in. Um, I'm going to start with primary blue and my number 12 bright brush. So I know it said thalo blue. We'll use the thalo later. Right now, it's just the primary blue. And so I am going to paint this entire shape in. And I'm going to outline it first. Um, this will help you really see the shape of the peacock. Um, if you need a little bit, because that chalk isn't very dark, so you can see what the shape looks like. Um, but also, 
when I like to when I paint in organic shapes I like to outline the object first and then paint it in so that's what I'm doing using the tip of the brush to kind of outline it with just the primary blue so there's my um, peacock body and then I'm going to paint the entire area in with the primary blue um, when I paint in the shape I'll go in the direction of the shape so my strokes are going um, up and down and curved contouring with the shape of the object and I'm filling it in um, this is just the base layer you may find that your primary blue is a tad bit translucent you can see the background behind it still and that's okay we're going to add a couple layers here so this is just the base color of our peacock body loaded my palette with some more of that primary blue. Make sure I have all this painted in. Okay, now I'm gonna load the phthalo blue. So phthalo is darker than primary blue. And I am going to use that. So the primary blue is still wet. I'm gonna use the phthalo blue to give my peacock some color variation, um, some depth, not anything realistic, but just on the left side of my peacock and um, kind of on the right side of the head here. Um, that's what I'm painting and I'm letting it kind of blend in with the primary blue so that I have um, some darker areas of blue. So I'm blending it in, kind of going with the flow of the shape here. Okay, then I'm going to um, drag it out a little bit. So I had all that blue on there, dragged it out on my palette and I loaded it with titanium white. So I have the white on my brush and I um, outlined it. I outlined that side wing, so the upside down teardrop shape that we drew earlier. I'm just gonna kind of fill it in. And obviously it's not gonna be pure white because I still have blue on my brush and that blue is not dry. So it turned into a light blue. Okay, didn't blend it all the way. Just kind of made it flow with the shape. Um, I'm going to give a little tiny bit of feather texture in here. I'm not going to be super detailed, just a few white strokes that kind of blend in a little bit. Um, again, um, some color variation. So it's not just a solid blue. It's got dark blue in there. It's, we got a few white strokes in there and we have the primary blue. So it gives the peacock a little bit more interest, a little bit of texture. Okay, next I'm not gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna grab that titanium white again. So there's a little bit more white on my brush now. And I am going to define this circle area on the head, so the side of his face. And I'm just using the um, flat brush to kind of form that. Um, the 12 bright is a little bit big for this area. I probably could have um, used a round brush. So if it's too big, you think you could switch to the um, one of the smaller round brushes the number four round brush so you can fill in that area um, more easy I kind of made it go outside the lines here so I'm kind of compensating for it there okay so now I'm going to completely rinse that brush and I am going to uh, use the color CAD Yellow Medium and get my number four round brush. Okay, 
So I am going to do the beak. This is the only part in the painting where the cad yellow shows up and I'm going to um, outline the beak. I'm going to fill it in with the yellow. Um, the cad yellow is see-through. It's a, a nice translucent color. So the yellow won't show up um, very opaque. So you might have to do a couple layers. Um, or you can add a little bit of white into your yellow and that yellow will show up a little bit better there. Okay, so next I am going to do the tail. Um, and I'm going to use the colors bright or brilliant, yellow, green. I'm going to use thalo blue and I'm going to use thalo green. So I'm starting with that bright, um, that lime green color. This is the brilliant, brilliant yellow green and the number four round brush. So I am doing these upside down teardrop shapes and I'm filling them in with the brilliant yellow green. A couple layers to make it nice and bright. So I'm gonna apply the same shape um, and you're only doing this on the inside of those two wavy lines that we drew for the tail and they're, they're gonna kind of um, go in this brick formation where they're alternating. So you're doing the rows of the upside down teardrop shapes and um, they're kind of staggered. So I'm gonna do that all throughout and you're, you may be doing the same amount. You may, maybe you have more of these um, teardrop shapes. Maybe you have less but you're gonna fill this entire area of the tail in with these staggered teardrop shapes. They're all pointing down. They're all kind of, um, the angles are slightly different depending on what side of the tail they're on. So this one's kind of angled more to the left. This one's angled a little bit to the right. And of course these are angled towards the right. So um, I'm just adding another layer here to get that bright, lime green color to show up nicely and I am going to um, eventually add other colors to this tail to create some other intricate designs on the tail so this is just the first layer and I'm just using up this brilliant yellow green to make sure it's nice and solid and opaque and bright. Okay, completely rinse my brush here. Um, I'm gonna go in and, so I mentioned that beak earlier, this is bothering me, but I'm gonna add a little bit of that titanium white to the cad yellow and I'm gonna brighten this beak up here. There we go. So now you can see how my yellow is brighter just by adding that white into it. And I am going to continue on and doing some more details with the face. So with the titanium white, I outlined that circle and I'm going to add a little bit more white. I don't want to turn this solid white. I want it to be like a very light blue. So my blue is still wet right there. If yours isn't, you could um, mix a very light blue and fill it in. Or um, So I just wanted it to be lighter right here. Um, I took a detour from the tail because I need that lime green color to dry a bit before going to the next step. So that's why I did that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do phthalo blue for the top head feathers. So I'm just outlining it and doing the little mark at the top um, with the titanium white and thalo blue. So both those colors on my brush, I'm just doing like a little tiny dash on top of those tail feather lines. 
Now I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to go back down to the tail. So now my lime green is a little bit dry and um, so with the phthalo blue I am going to go ahead and I'm going to outline all of my lime green teardrop shapes that I painted. Um, so the phthalo blue it slightly slightly overlaps that lime green just a tad just a hairline um, if it mixes with it a little bit that's okay I'm basically just outlining it um, so if you don't have enough space between some of the teardrops to outline you just kind of go around it so I'm filling in any of that the negative space that's around that shape there um, but of course there's going to be space left um, we don't want to fill it in solid we're just outlining here and then right here we want to make it look like that tail is connected to the body here so I'm just going to add a few feathers in there so a few strokes of that phthalo blue so phthalo green this is like the perfect peacock color so I rinse the brush I grabbed phthalo green and now I'm going to do um, the outlining thing again. So I'm going to outline the phthalo blue, but I'm going to do a different kind of outline. Almost like I'm painting um, the feathers of a peacock really. So I'm just doing this outline kind of contoured loose strokes. So there's a little bit of gap between the phthalo and the, um, the next color. This is phthalo green. And some of these lines are going to kind of spiral here on the side of the tail see that so I'm going to do the line and then um, it's just going to kind of you know spiral out and then um, this is uh, I want to fill in any of the major gaps that are left here so some of the gaps that are left between the bright green colors and make sure that's filled in So we have that little gap there, but I'm not painting it in solid. I'm painting it in with the same kind of stroke. Um, next I have the Mars Black and on the very tip of all of those lime green teardrop shapes, I'm going to do this heart and it's this narrow looking heart. So it's got the two bumps at the top, but the narrow part kind of goes to a point where that teardrop point is. So I'm gonna do that with the Mars Black on all of those bright green teardrop shapes. And then optional but you can do this I um, went ahead and kind of added a few stroke lines over some of the phthalo green with the black just to give it a little tad bit of dark areas in there okay so I'm going to rinse my brush off now I'm going to use my 10 zero liner this is a very tiny detailed brush and I'm going to um, kind of outline my beak here and do that line that's in the middle. I am going to outline the edges of the beak. Okay, and there's a little tiny dashed line right there on the right side. Next, I'm gonna do the titanium white. And so the black right here ideally should be dry and I'm just doing a little white dot in the middle top part of those heart shapes. So my black was not dry but I um, have a nice thick, it was kind of dry but not really, but the white is a little thick so it shows up. That one definitely wasn't dry. Okay, so just a white dot on all the little black parts and we're done with the tail. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Mars Black. I'm gonna do the eye. So do a little oval shape for the eye. 
And then, of course, the little white dot with the liner. Um, okay, so we're done with the peacock. And I'm gonna do the, the, the flowers in the tree. So we have these, um, I don't even know if these kind of flowers exist in real life, but they're these long strings of pink flowers hanging from the tree, like a pink willow tree or something like that. And I'm gonna use Q-tips for this because these are all dots. And you saw the colors that displayed on the screen. So I'm using quinacridone magenta, medium magenta, and titanium white. I'm gonna start with the quinacridone. And um, you can use, I'm using one Q-tip, but I switched to two or three here in just a second. And I'm just gonna do dots of these vertical looking string things. And they're just kind of hanging off the tree here, okay? So if you use two Q-tips, you can see what happens. Um, you can actually dip it in multiple colors. So I did one in white and the other in the quinacridone. And you do little docks. You cover more ground with doing the two Q-tips and you can kind of see. So the ultimate goal is to do these dots, of course, but um, create some depth. And you get the depth by doing the different colors. So the, the white and the quinacridone um, mixed together. And then, of course, I had the medium magenta on there, so I can load it with that color as well. Oh, and brilliant purple. I did load my palette with brilliant purple as well. Okay, so um, you can kind of play around with that. So I'm going to try it with the three Q-tips here. And um, you can kind of see the different effects that it makes. Um, I'm trying, trying to make the bundles start out kind of thick at the top, and then they kind of go to a, like a point as they go down make them look as natural as possible, like they're hanging off of the branches. Um, this part of the painting took the longest. It takes a long time to do all these dots. It's actually really super relaxing zen moments, so it's okay if it takes a, a long time because it's very relaxing. But you can go ahead and do that at as many um, bundles of flowers as you want. Um, you'll see in the video that I get really crazy here I get end up doing a ton of flowers so just kind of watch it um, I might go silent here a couple times um, until I explain maybe something new that I'm doing but all I'm doing is doing the different colors different q-tips of the um, bundles of flowers here gets make sure you're doing color variation of lights and dark areas I did a lot of the white and the brilliant purple over here in this area. It makes it looks, look like they're kind of further in the distance because the color is lighter and it helps to not look so cluttered around the peacock's head. So I, that's why I did the lighter colors over here. So that's basically it for this painting. The rest of this video is just me adding all these little dots and details and color. Um, but that's it. Sign your name, show it off, share it on the Step by Step Painting Facebook page. You can direct message it to me. You can upload it on one of the Pinterest pictures. Um, but that's basically it. Thank you for watching the How to Paint a Peacock acrylic painting tutorial.